Right. Chronicle of the Crowns, session nine. Now, we've been doing a lot of bookkeeping, so this might not go as long as the other ones, but we'll see where we end up. So our heroes have returned to Strathwell from their journey to the far north, to the ruined capital of Dol Siriath of the old High Kingdom. And uh, we met on the way back the army consisting of both Lord Beric's soldiers as well as the crusading uh, war bands of the Covenant of the First Flame. And our heroes uh, sort of made a compact with Lord Beric uh, because of Glarvir's uh, prophesying that they would help Glarvir, uh, sorry, uh, Lord Beric establish alliances with the dwarves and the elves with the sort of long-term implication of them standing together against the darkness brewing in the old capital. And with that, uh, it was established that the heroes uh, would head to the dwarves, uh, the dwarven <laughs> mountains, uh, and they would have a representative of Lord Beric with them to establish, help establish anyway, those alliances. Now, we have arrived in Strathwell back, back again here with, uh, well, Lord Beric's seat of power. And it has been <laughs> revealed that Lord Beric, in his letter, wishes that his steward, the rat-faced Ostor, um, of Strathfell is going to be his emissary to the dwarves and will be joining our heroes on their journey, their long trek towards the lost dwarven uh, citadel of Cascarad, the Anvil Hall, as it is also known as. Now, <clears throat> our heroes are still in Strathfell and we have some few tasks to take care of before we head on to the road. So, without further ado, which is also some further ado, ironically enough, um, we'll get into it. So, yeah, uh, you are in Strathville. Uh, Ostor is prepped to go with you. And, uh, yeah, what do you want to do? There was a bunch of discussion uh, around different things in last session as well as during our bookkeeping that we've just finished doing. Uh, but, yeah, please please uh, engage in whatever activities you wish in Strathville. Well, I believe I shall be attempting to educate young Cameron in the the ancient dwarven pre-mission ritual of going on a massive, massive epic bender. Okay, Cameron. You, you do know, Glavia, <laughs> that when one is about to hit the books and consult the spirits and try and bring the world to a bit brighter dawn than it has been previously. One does not spend the previous evening getting absolutely... Aye, lad, but the, the, the main problem with that is you can spend so long peering into your circles, into your books and that, and reaching for this brighter dawn, which is a laudable endeavour, do not mistake me, but what is the use in reaching for this brighter dawn, this better tomorrow, if... You allow all the good things that are here now in this world to pass you by. After all, if you do not experience the full flavour and majesty and brown liquid beauty of the world, then how can you appreciate what you're striving for? I feel we experience hangovers very differently, my friend. Uh, a hangover is just fate's way of telling you that you did a fine job. <laughs> it is a it is a test that you must pass through and become stronger through mastering your pain. I tell you, I tell you what, Lavia. Since you since you so loudly proclaimed what my fate was yesterday evening and. Uh, Aye, was, lad, for, for after all, when fate speaks, should we not shout it from the rooftops so that all can hear it and know the true majesty of fate? 
think that depends on the proclamation. Some fate, all, I would all is the whispered. will, all is the will of all fate, spoken. and all should be spoken loudly and in a booming, rambunctious voice. It is only it is how people choose to react to that knowledge that is important, but that knowledge itself should not be denied. I see that your conversation with Beric has uh, emboldened your feelings towards our plight. Indeed. The, the path is now more clearly lit than ever and stretches away in front of me. And well, as it stretches into the friend. as it stretches into the future, your future and also that of Lord Beric's, in which I hope to play a small part in helping you achieve your destiny, it also, as fate often does, stretches back, for me at least, into the past, to the great holds of my forefathers. Is the symmetry not a wondrous thing? There is a certain beauty in the tracing the, the steps of your ancestors. Indeed. But I would not like it to shackle my steps for going forward. I, I know that you have your views on how my future will play out. No, it's disturbing to think of. But well, I, as I, as I, I've I, said to you, as I've said to you, uh, you and Cameron, the. The glimpses I have of fate's majestic plan for all of us are simply that, glimpses. And fate is a, a wide-ranging, encompassing force that people, even people who are practiced, such as myself, we are only imperfect instruments to receive the majesty of fate. So it may be there is something I have not foreseen or that I have overlooked or that fate takes an unexpected twist or turn. Like a single stone within a roaring river. Very much so. We we only we can only perceive the ripples and not the actual stone itself. But if we follow the path of the ripples, eventually all may become clear. Well, I will. I tell you what, Ravi, I will meet you halfway, as I feel. Ha! Is Half a bender it is then, young Cameron. <laughs> I will attend to what I the books and uh, my research here while I have the opportunity to pursue. Uh, Lord Berry gave me, gave me leave to salvage some equipment here while we have the opportunity and check in with Tyrell, make sure he is, uh, he is well. Then once that is done, I will, I will share a drink with you. Very well then, you will find me in the Isle House. Just follow your ears. I will see you well. Study well, Cameron, and I will see you in the Isle House. <laughs> And off I go. I'm going to hit a book montage. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, everyone's prepping. Um, Glover to drink, That's Cameron him. to read. We get a cup between that like, Cameron, like doing his hard study in Glover. Like... <laughs> uh, Tyrell. Yes. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, hello. So, Welcome back. as a part of our uh, intro, Mm -hmm. uh, it had been established that uh, there had been some sort of roundtable discussion in the last session uh, about reforging old ties. Now, obviously, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't at the last session, but I wonder if, as an elven prince, mm -hmm. if, at least for my part of the elven world, mm -hmm. um, I could have been the facilitator for that instead of being sure. having to send Oster because there's no way I'm letting that rat-faced <laughs> creature anywhere near our borders. Um, so, yeah, I would yeah, imagine I Beric would take my word for it and yeah, sure. uh, would, would work with me because we had some sort of a rapport. Yeah, um, so. and I think that was that was put down as like, yeah, we'll, we'll do that when we get around to it and we, we're going to cool. start with the dwarves because that's where you guys and were And we need to go there out. anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. It, it was, it was kind of like, have your people call my people and we'll, yeah, right. we'll figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. And Barrick seems yeah. very, you know, for human, we work with him. So I'm uh, quite happy with that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I got caught the tail end of that. I do apologize. I had to step off for one second. Um, everyone's doing their thing. So Tyrael, yeah. uh, 
would he have already been, we would all come together, right? Yeah, yeah, you all came here together so. and you also learned when you took uh, Beric's letter to Ostor <laughs> that he's going to be joining you. Or sure. so. so. Uh, I think I would have slunk off in a bit of a, bit of a, yeah, huff. Bit, of a bit of a huff at that and uh, left the city to attend to some things in the nearby wood. Um, yeah. I have some people I need to see and um, items to hopefully procure from mm -hmm. some friends. <laughs> So that's my intention. Right. Okay. Well, we cut away to the forest. Now, there's a peculiar scene there, uh, which now is it your 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 intention before was to get a leader here from a very different group than the Swords of the White Tower. Yeah, I had wanted Serval and, yeah. you know, who few were best yeah. to escort my my guys to here because yeah. they know these the human lands, obviously, better than yeah. we do. So um, you, you come upon a, a scene in the forest where there are two very different camps. Uh, and um, it's there's no more leaves because you're at the very cusp of winter now. Mm -hmm. But you can sort of hear the tension almost in the forest because you have your swords of the White Tower camped over there. And then you have elves from a very different place with a very different demeanor camped sort of within eye shot. And um, these are some rough elves. Let's just yeah, say. This, this is... This is a very frosty atmosphere, not to make a winter, winter pun here, <laughs> um, that you walk into. And, well, I suppose you're going to hit the the sort of breakaway faction first? Uh, yeah, so um, I imagine that my brothers from the White Tower need less convincing uh, to mm -hmm. do as I have requested them, which is to mm -hmm. um, defend elven interests by defending this particular area um, mm -hmm. me making that pitch to them is going to be a little easier than making it to Zerval, mm -hmm. but you know hey i'm fabulous and we have a rapport so hopefully it'll go right well. so um you're in Zerval's camp now she is dressed up in full gear yes and um she is, well, is winter gear as well so it's it's fairly you know, everyone's pretty tooled up here right now. <laughs> and uh, um, she's got her entire garb of basically leaving eyes, you know, uncovered. But everything else is pretty much like swaddled in either armor or winter gear. And uh, she has a like a full face, um, not armor, but uh, it's, uh, what do you call it? Why am I? Scarves. <laughs> uh, blanking out on that. But yeah, she has... Um, Hmm. I'm going to make a roll here real quick to see how many she brought with her. Oh, she's got a five um, person team uh, in the camp. Sounds about right. And um, uh, she, she's, you know, got up and, and met you before you actually enter, you know, the, the fire the range. Of course, I would um, have approached gingerly yeah. knowing that her perimeter, her pickets would have been you know, yeah. sighting me from half a mile away. Yeah. So. so she approaches you and she's like, would you like to explain this? And I motions towards the I will incline my time. head towards her and, <laughs> and have my hands spread wide in a non-threatening gesture. So, oh, it's been ages. How are you? Uh, currently distressed. But why? I didn't come here to parlay with these and again she gestures towards they the are my camp. friends that I had asked you to escort I appreciate that I understand that perhaps maybe they weren't mm, uh, as friendly as myself but you have to understand no all I have to do is listen to what you have to say so here we are now, now, I think perhaps, maybe, this will come as a bit of a 
hmm, surprise <laughs> that I'm going to ask for this particular favor from you, but uh, when I think you hear what is at stake, you may be inclined to offer your assistance further. Well, you have my attention now. You've brought these ones here. You're here yourself. Indeed. You asked me to come over here next to keep an eye on whatever this town is. Mm -hmm. So what is it? So. <clears throat> I know it's significant. I know you know it's significant, but how, what have you heard of my leaving Ergathal and our lands. Nothing. All right. Well, you know. We don't I exactly don't... have the ears to keep. Ah, well. And you only have so many friends like me back home. Yes, I understand. The list is very short. Hmm. We, we do lack in allies. Well, now, that is why I am here, for we have always cherished the one reasonable pair of ears on your side of the river. And I appreciate your reasonable ears on your side of the river. And what lovely ears they are when I can see them. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. <clears throat> You're well aware of the state of the world. Obviously, the... <laughs> she chuckles and, and you know, nods. Uh, it is something that we sometimes forget in our, on our side of the river, but oh, I you know. and yours have suffered most keenly at the hands of the darkness and humans folly and losing their crown. Of course, you've heard the, the encroaching darkness and how things are turning from bad to worse, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. et it, is, it is the end that approaches. <laughs> well, I, I like to think of it as possibility for new beginnings, but perhaps maybe we'll I'm see when it optimistic. comes. Hmm. Yes, well, in order to um, facilitate my outcome, the ending I would wish for, um, I have joined in a fellowship with a dwarf and a man. She, you know, only has her mm -hmm. eyes yeah. visible, as I said, but like she blinks them very slowly in utter confusion. <laughs> mm. I'm going to lean in closely. My hand's still at my sides, though, so her guards don't shoot mm -hmm. me. Yeah, they... they. I trust they, her, but I I, I don't yeah. know every one of her elves, so mm -hmm. obviously, you know, they, they we, there's some animosity in the family, let's just say. But I will lean in a little closer. It's like, we seek the human crown. You... You do realize that we've come through these lands. Like we've, I've been here before. I know. But we have turned a lot of stones for this we very have thing. It on good and ancient authority that it is in a certain location, far from here, but we think we're close, but. As you may have heard what's happening in Dulcirath and the northern reaches of this particular region. But there's humans a, are... an, another human tyrant looking yes, to Yes, the humans their are getting world. ready to kill each other. Yes, 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 yes. It's all very droll. Mm. Mm. Well, however... Uh, uh, the, the leaves do fall every year. Indeed, says. indeed. <laughs> uh, I can't keep up with them, but... You might have noticed the Covenant of the Flame marching through here recently with an army. <laughs> yeah, they're some, all of, some of them stayed. Oh, did they stay forever? Yes. Mm, well, that's good to know. <clears throat> Never were a fan of them. Uh, obviously, we prefer humans slightly more so than yourselves, but not them. They are worm food, as it said. So, anyway. Yes, we think we have a location of the human crown. And we're going to go for it, me and my fellows. But this tyrant, this king of the flame, who has his own crown, forged by ancient sorceress, and wields great power with it. What now? <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Now, my intention is to come back to this region with the human crown prior to all the armies between here, this city and Dosirath being destroyed or converted or turned into zombies. Um, but, but I need a little insurance policy, which is why I've called my friends from my lands. They have all come. They are going to make sure that if the worst should come to the worst, the city will um, hold at least for a moment or two longer. You're hopefully giving us a chance to return with the human crown and come in with a mighty swing, so to speak. But uh, you and your furies are very mighty, very mighty. Uh, your assistance here in assuring that Strathfell here doesn't turn to ashes and leave the only friendly city in the region in ruin before we can return, that would be very useful. So you think there are going to be marauders coming from the north to here? I think that the army of the Covenant and more shall be coming back and possibly at the command of this king of the north with his crown of flame. Yes, correct. And right. us elves will be the only thing standing between it and the rest of humanity. And of course, if humanity falls, then what's left of the Murata goes away, and of course, then eventually even the homelands themselves will be threatened. And I can't allow that. That's you an excellent that. point for us to uh, kick, kick in some dice here. So now you've laid out your argument in detail and specific detail uh, that, um, so yeah, you, you, you probably have an intent here, <laughs> which is quite clear. Yes, I want her to join <laughs> up and help. Out. Yeah, help in the defense of Strathfell. Correct. If necessary. If necessary. Hopefully yeah. it won't be. Hopefully yeah. it's just her trading barbs and, and yeah. nasty glances with my, just, my bros. But... Like just staring at the, the White Tower swordsman yeah. And, yeah. and them staring at, at her people. Hey, who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll build a bridge. Maybe I'll come back and they're, they're having an orgy. I'm not going to ask too many questions. Yeah. But So what is, your, what is your task? What are you doing to convince her? I want to appeal to her sense of kinship with obviously the, our race, her mm -hmm. own self-interest mm -hmm. uh, in defending not only her lands, but of mm -hmm. course the remaining homelands. Um, and of course, personal appeals. Well, we have a relationship and mm -hmm. I've always tried to assist her when and if I could. So I'm, out, I'm now asking for a favor. So... Mm -hmm. Well, um, it sounds like persuade to me. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I really. Oh no, I do have that now. I think actually. Uh, let me just check my sheet. I'm hoping I have it, or else this is going to be a short trip. <laughs> uh, not, not. I don't have it yet. I'm still building it. I got two more aptitudes left before I can get it. So I'll have to. I'll have to roll it raw um, and hope for the best. So what are we? What are we going to say about Etharx in the so sort of lost elven realm that these people are from which she is one of so yeah mm -hmm. and she is not only one of them but she's uh one of the remaining atharks that's correct she's there. one of their main leaders at the so stage. like are we as a baseline because you created these people as a concept yeah do we think these are more of a like a warrior people or are they do they have like they are elves culturally right. still yes but correct. Are they more preoccupied with sort of martial pursuits or Correct. yeah, so or not? So essentially they are the, the last of a destroyed kingdom who refused to give up. Okay, well that's that's all I needed. Those last words are are the ones that I needed. Basically. Which is not great for your role here, but I, I know that, but that's that's the that's <laughs> yeah, what we created. That, that's, so that's that's, that's what who we do. they are. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to appeal to that because obviously yeah. but yeah i get yeah. it but so this is a tough sell for for her and for them i get it yeah and this is only like this uh, as as uh is the case with burning wheel rolls like it's not like do you get this or no and then nothing happens no right it's, there's gonna be something yeah, something something yeah. is gonna I'm, happen I'm, I'm 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 willing to pay yeah. 
um, I'm willing to owe. I mean, let's just see what happens though. But, let's see. So I'm um, on your sheet here, because I'm going to check one thing. Mm -hmm, sure. Okay. Right. So I just wanted to check because you're also an ETHARC and you're, you're not like a governing ETHARC either. Like you're, you've, you've got other shit going than courtly business. I'm not currently at home ruling my principality. No, yeah. like and I'm, I'm abroad. And you've, you've got stacks of will. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say. And we're peers in that sense. Yeah. Though, obviously. I'm going to you know. say, cause you're, you're not like, you're not a court prince at, you know, as you are currently, like you're not, uh, you know, the Lord who sits in the hall deals with the courtiers all day. Sure. You're not that right now. No. And, and you normally just, at home, I'm not on a board. Yeah, you've got so mad stats still from your life paths, which are martial in nature. So we're going to look at seven uh, obstacle here, just okay. based on you being an etharch. Which well. then turns to a 14 or. Yeah, it turns into a 14 by yeah, the yeah. sheet. You don't, you don't need fine. to put in seven. Yeah, 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 no, I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm yeah. noting for the people playing at home. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. For for those of you joining us from home, this difficulty this, this is starts be... at seven. But because Durell does not have the persuade skill, the yeah. obstacle will be doubled into fourteen. Um, so my question then becomes: um, Welcome to my world. <laughs> that's what I'm wanting, and I'm appealing to her. Yeah. Now, I guess my question to you, and if it's worth me bumping it up with, say, Aratha. I don't think it is because it's so high the obstacle. Um, what is the fail state here? Or yeah, so, and this is this is good on you because the the process should usually be mm -hmm. um, sort of you state what you want, what are you doing to get it, which is the mm -hmm. role part, and then I say what happens if you fail. Now, sometimes these are self evident. Sometimes we forget because we're so, like the momentum is so great that we're just like, oh, do the thing. But um, I am supposed to figure out the fail state before you roll. Usually, okay. so oh, okay, that's good uh, to know. Good, good on you to bring it up. Um, we've done it a couple of times, but we fail more than we don't Ooh. because we're you know tied up in the situation and we're and that is the game as well. Yeah. Um, so, what's going to happen if you fail is, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say like yeah. So what happens is. Uh, if you fail this, she's going to stay. She's going to make an effort here. And in fact, she is going to like uncharacteristically make like a break for it and actually try and talk to your white tower friends over here. And that is going to result in your white tower friends being like, oh, oh, why? Like Terrell brought us here and we're going to be buddies with these guys. And there's going to be word going back home um, mm -hmm. about the fact that oh we've we're we're apparently budding up with the you know the 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 ones we don't talk about in polite society yeah uh, and um, Terrell is the mastermind behind all this so what I'm saying is um, we're going to get you an actual reputation as a result of this if you fail okay. and that's going to be an infamous reputation applying to the Elven lands as you being um, like, I don't know, a known associate of, of this fallen realm of elves. I, I like that. I can, I can live with that if that's the case. If, but it yeah. takes, if, again, my belief of uh, I'll do anything to defend my country mm -hmm. and my etharch, uh, yeah. I don't really, uh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mince the, mince the words here or, or give up the ghost. So, um, yeah. All right. Let me make the roll because I know it's going to be. I know we're not getting. Yeah. It, so. what, watch. Watch this, Matthew. Watch this yeah. be like a sixteen oh, right. success roll. <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible. Only the seven, but uh, yeah, just roll yeah. enough sixes and you'll you'll get there. Um, no help or advantage on that, right? Yeah. No. Okay, that's fine. I just need to know. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. dump any Roth into it. We're just going to. We're just going to let it fly. Not yeah. quite. Not, not quite. quite. Not quite. There's one six though. Oh, there's a six in there. Oh, <laughs> if you want to try and get 10 okay. more successes. Um, so yeah, no, so yeah, so you discuss, and um, yeah, she shakes a hand and says that they, they will make an effort. She thinks it's futile to try and save this one particular human city, but she accepts your plan of 
like this this incredible story that you've told like she's basically with the attitude of like let's see if any of this is true <laughs> like if any of this shakes out, i've never lied to her before, like yeah so, yeah but you know. she's like dude like someone sold you a line of bullshit man and I, i wish it wasn't you chasing after this wild story but you know i'll i'll stay around and we'll see what happens and she uh, is actually like you you're in influencing her i guess in a positive way from your culture's perspective yes of you know she's gonna eventually in these following weeks she's gonna be like you know what like fuck it like i'll just go and you know chat up one of these white tower dudes and we'll see what we what we end up doing and uh yeah so that's gonna end up with you know i like and that's you kind of being the spearhead of the cultural maybe the cultural change uh coming up when we gotta start making bridges i mean we're, yeah yeah if this is the end times then we gotta yeah. do it as a people yeah so. we, we need to call all hands that's now it. like it's we, we can't afford being you know like oh yeah. you guys don't act as uh, as we do oh no <laughs> oh no Ooh. yeah you guys can mur murder officially that's all i care about at this stage yep. like, like uh, can you so, swing a sword real well kill people cool yeah. i've got people need killing yeah we, we have a lot yeah yeah so yeah they're gonna hang around and the word is gonna reach the elven lands that were, okay. were apparently we're talking with these people again mm -hmm, curious and there's an ethark spearheading it so it's 1d infamous yeah and then i'll say it's uh um associates with dark elves i just call yeah, it yeah yeah i think it's the easiest way to do it yeah cool and that well, is, I, a, I have to say, I actually, that was one of the best fail states I've, I've seen yeah, so far. And that is, that, is, that is the thing I'm as well. Like it's yeah. the, the fail state in Burning Will, like the only thing that is etched in stone is you don't get what you said. Got it. You could get what you said, and then I'll put something on top or I'll take some bits away. But the only thing that you cannot get is the exact thing you said. And that makes, so, that's perfectly, that yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I love it. I love it. And yeah. the, the point for me then is like the, the thing that I need to do is like push something forward. Like we, we can't yeah. say, oh, you whiffed. Like she's like, oh no, well, I guess I'll well, you're NPC fucked. my way here. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, not talk Indeed. to anyone. Indeed. So, okay. So you've set up your, your sort of plan with your friends. Now you can go chat up with your, um, right. I do just need guys to real if you quick talk to. to those dudes real fast. Yeah. Um, and essentially I, what I will do with them is I'll pretty much give them the same speech that yeah. i gave to zaral but just with the whole you know bit lots more hugging and maybe you yeah. know some, yeah. some heart that, that, yeah there's, there's know. a lot of like hey i haven't seen you in like several Ages, decades you know? right exactly you know it's been been an age so um uh anyway sorry my wife just was doing something yeah. um yeah so i'll go over to them and i'll also basically be like hey you know mm -hmm. got the stuff um because yeah. i'm presuming i don't have to convince them to come stick around no no they're they're, they're on board with your plan cool so they understand the stakes so yep. but i do want to make that role for that for that yep. particular item we discussed so yeah uh, i will go ahead and do that now mm -hmm. so again um now we're rolling resources to try and see if we have um successfully acquired through these emissaries from the white tower um an item which is mm -hmm. The elven rope. An elven rope for his long journey to the mountains, which is going to be very uh, useful. We got, <laughs> yeah. so we got some stuff to do. Resources is a very particular stat in Burning Wheel. Um, if you roll resources, you can only get dots on it if you succeed. If you fail, you don't get any advancement Makes on sense. resources. Okay. And if you fail, you are taxed, which is to say temporarily reduce your resources by right. your margin of failure. Ooh. So if let's say your obstacle is going to be six and you roll zero successes, you lose six resources in the effort of trying to make it happen. It's a um, very abstracted system that not only covers like material wealth, like coins and shit, but it also covers like social capital and basically you calling in favors and spending time. And sometimes when you fail, what, what happens is, yeah, you, you paid a couple guys like, Oh, here's a, here's like 20, 20 coins for you. Now, can you tell me who knows about this shit so that I can buy it? And then they tell you something that is not true. And then at the end of the day, you're like, well, I talked to six guys. They all fleeced me. Now I don't have money. Shit. <laughs>
but yeah, that's that's sort of the very, very abstract way that Burning Wheel handles wealth, basically. Now, if you had a sort of treasure, quote unquote, um, we could handle those as what's called loot. Uh, well, uh, sorry, um, cash dice. Cash so bombs. that's basically mm -hmm. one use resources buff. So if you have a chest full of coins, that's going to be a certain amount of extra one used uh, dice that you can have for your resources. Unfortunately, Dulcera had hardly any loot in it, so... Uh... Yeah, and you, you, you guys did tend to give away some of the things that you found as well, which, you know, that's... It's neither here nor there, Hannes. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> your, your, your priorities are elsewhere, and now Indeed. we are faced with the reality that some things have a cost. So, yeah. uh, so then I shall make the roll. Mm -hmm. um, it is obstacle three, I believe we discussed, yep. Yep. for this particular item. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you use our author? You can mash in Artha, I think. We'll, we'll go with that because I don't have the time now to sure, go no through problem. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll um, say yes. Now I want to add, then I'm going to do just that, I think. Because yeah. uh, I want to make this happen if possible. Um, obstacle three. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's a... Wow. It's a Cameron ass roll. I mean, it's not as bad, but that's. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's oh, a bad oh. miss. Okay. All right. Well, I don't get my nice elven rope, I guess. Uh... Um, now, th this is the thing. There is. Um, I forget what it's called. There's a, there's a clause there, uh, oh, no. which I will look up. Unfortunately, I don't remember what it is called. Okay, here we go. So, um, so there is a thing I can use called the gift of kindness, <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> okay. Sure, let's, which, okay. <laughs> which, which Wait, is to what say, what is this mythical thing? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. What? Hmm? Um. Right. So we're gonna use that. Because in this instance, it's a little bit of a special situation. It's your old buddies uh, bringing you stuff. And just as an intro into resources, uh, we're going to do this um, because I want to. So we're going to use the gift of kindness. Now, here's the thing. You can either, uh, let's see. Right, so you can either get taxed for two dice, so lose two of your resources, mm -hmm. or you can cut your losses and um, uh, you're only taxed for one die. Now, if you, if you get the full tax, you get the item as well. Well, I want the item, so I'll, I'll take yeah. the tax on it. Right. Yeah. I want so, the yeah, um, as, as you're hogging it out with your... Uh, sword master friends uh, one of them uh, hands you this finely spun elven rope that you wrote about like I'm going I'm going to need this because I'm going on some rough rough terrain but then he reminds me of the like the hundred quid I owed him back in the day and... yeah and that's basically what that is is like the the sort of um, abstract thing here is they called in some of your favors back home Elven rope by Carter. We like got a shortage back home. Like, is that <laughs> is, is you know wartime? They action. have Brexit too back home. <laughs> oh, uh, elf elf exit. Yeah, elf exit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it'd be a lot of oh, la, 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 at the door, as right? so, you know, because we're but yeah. We're crazy they they like bring that. you the elven rope All as right, requested. Cool. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thanks, I guess. Huff. Yeah, scalping me for it while we're out here trying to save the world. But right. no, you you need to you need to talk to the rope guy in in your home. I'm going to talk to the rope guy when I get back home. <laughs> I know people. I know people. Damn it! All right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's me done. I believe. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you you exchange pleasantries. You reconvene. Now, Cameron, did you go for a bender? I, I intended to join Glavia once I did some stuff. Okay, so you can just you can just add on the alchemy kit because you you can do that. So 
you can put that um, on. Um, I, I had an idea. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to uncork this terrible idea. Well, but it's gone well historically, so let's let's get on with it. Um, so on my beliefs, I'm trying. I've got two prong thing. I'm trying to figure out things with Dulceriaf. Mm -hmm. I want to learn about its history because I feel like the more I learn about Dulceriaf, mm -hmm. the better I can understand what happened there and how mm -hmm. it how it might connect to my ancestry. And this could eventually become important because we know my my shtick. I also want to know what's going on with the church. I've so I know now what their intentions are in the city. Mm -hmm. which is kind of obvious, but they also, from discussions with my student, uh, kind of gives me the impression that they've got, they've got like either some creature or they've tapped into some power that maybe they shouldn't be or potentially, you know, something that needs to be mm -hmm. explored further. So I'm looking for books. Like I'm right. looking for information. That crazy thing, books are safe. Well, some books are safe, not all books. I mean, yeah, depends. <laughs> yeah. But as I was... Uh, Sorry, John, uh, while, while um, our elf buddy was dancing around with his friends. Um, I'm contemplating summoning Beric's wife. Mm -hmm. Beric's wife? His dead wife. <laughs> Are you talking about his mother? Oh, his mother. Sorry, his mother. Yes, yeah, his mother. Yeah, 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 his mother. Yeah, yeah. his mother. His mother. Because mm -hmm. she was a dark watcher. She yeah. may have information. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I mean, you're, you're the necromancer, so... It's summoner. Necromancer is a, it's adjacent. We, we're not we're not uh, we're not closely affiliated. <laughs> hey, I'm evil hey. adjacent. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're all about the conversation, not the control. Okay, mm -hmm. we're all about having words. But I also don't want to. I don't know how Beric would feel about me having a conversation with his dead uh, ancestor. In his in his hold, and if he found if he finds out, this could sour things between. Us. But I, um... Yeah, you go into his bedroom and you summon his dead mother, and you have a chat about you know, death. <laughs> so I'm not sh I'm not sure if I w I kind of want to do it at the same time. It's just the sort of thing I was I, I don't know if it's a great idea or how much prep time I'd need to actually do it because we don't want to spend too much time. In, in no, you're you're spending time there anyway because like. Larry's are getting tanked. Terrell mm -hmm. is writing out, making deals. You've got time. I do have time. Because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Yeah, don't let your summonings be dreams, bro. But do I? I'm guessing. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> 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 um. All right. Okay, I'll I will give it a go. I'll see if I can summon his dead mother. Because I picked up on the fact last session, no, obviously, um, she wasn't here in the flesh, um, that she, she was a dark watcher. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and beseech her for uh, information. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, if I can. Are you? Are you making a circle? Are you? Yes. If I got the time, I will make. Yeah, a yeah circle. absolutely. I, I think we're like we're spending at least minimum like one day there. Yeah. So, which is why I didn't want to get drunk with Galavia before before I did this. Yeah, you, you don't want to get drunk before summoning the dead. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you do. So I'm thinking I'll do it in the workshop because I th I feel like that's the place people would not disturb me. Yeah, that's very true. It's not yeah. tradition like it's locked up traditionally. Mm -hmm. So I'll give it a go. And I'm so because I probably won't this time. I'm, I'm talking to my familiar as if it's like my sounding board, being like, this is a this is potentially a dangerous idea. And you know, some of my previous summonings have not gone so well. Which this might be an opportunity to get more information through an unusual source. And I you know I am a summoner after all. This is what I do. And I'm guessing she's restless dead. A death did not seem like something she what she um, was happy to receive at the time of its. Uh... Right, so she is restless death because uh, the covenant killed her. Very violent death. She wasn't buried, probably. <laughs> I need to double check, and I have to. But 
if I recall, because I've not I've not successfully done this in a session yet. You so you I, did summon an additional wraith though. Don't rub don't rub it in. That's not that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, summoning. Well, I think I have to know exactly the, the service I want from them before I summon yeah. them. Yeah, well, um, not before you summon them. Restless Dead can give you revelation, which is the information bit. Yeah. So that's that's you done. That's what I want, yeah. Yeah, and the obstacle to summon them is three, and the price is tribute. Now, then you may be on to bargaining, but we'll deal with that when we get there. So... Order of business is circle, summoning circle, circination, and um, then you summon the spirit, and then you negotiate if that's possible. Do you reckon I could get like a trinket without without causing too much like bother, like a trinket of Beric or something, something from his household? Yeah, you're you're like you have free access to the manor. Yeah, so I'll get like something of his to offer as a a mentor. If you, if you want to bring up some stuff. Yeah, and you've got the alchemy stuff as well. Yeah. So you're not lacking for sort of... Tribute. Um, what do you know? Like resonant items, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. I'm going to say that in in his like in his study area or his room or something, like where I was, as while he's been gone, God, I feel like a thief now. I could probably just ransack his house. I found like a like a, a childhood wood carving mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. you know, like a, of like a creature in the local area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, you know, it's going to be like a elk, like an elk, mm -hmm. and offer that to her as a, as a kind of for the mentor of a, a son. The fact that he's doing, he's doing well. Okay, so, so just, do I need to specify what circle I'm drawing? Yeah, yeah. You've got sure. summoner's gate, prison circle, and fortress circle. Summoner makes it summoner's gate makes it easier for you to summon the spirit. Prison circle locks them in there. Fortress Circle protects you from the spirit. I'm going to do prisoner because I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. what their attitude is going to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to play it safe. I think we're one step away from like one roll away from just like seeing like a giant like marshmallow man like <laughs> walking through a Strathmore. Because I know I know the wheelmaster is excited if I succeed. He was even more excited if I mess up again. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way it goes. So uh, the prison circle traps the spirit with, within its... An entity yeah. may not project any of its powers beyond the circle. It may not twist, burn, harm um, while in the prison. A spirit trapped within the prison may only bargain with the summoner or wait. Uh, the obstacle to draw the prison is equal to the will exponent of the spirit to be imprisoned. Mm. So, that, so that's restless dead, I'm guessing. It goes by the category of the... Yeah, wrestle it. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to make a roll then for that to draw the circle? Yeah, and I need to determine the difficulty. Okay. Oh, let's do this. Let's 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 mess this up all the way. Okay, mm. Where's me? Mm. So, what will she have? She's been dead for a while. Mm -hmm. Let's call it um, B4. B4. So four okay. obstacle for the circle. Circuation, isn't it? Cir cir Circination, yep. All right. Obstacle four. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't get an advantage on this roll. Okay. Here we go. Brilliant. No sixes either. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Routine, though. This is yep. like this is the stuff I'm good at. This is like the stuff I've got high skills. This yeah, is brilliant. I love it. Okay. Okay. So, so the circle is not as effective as I'd like. But yeah, I don't know you this. spend four hours making the circle, and uh, it's not going to work. You know. <laughs> okay. Well. So in the dead of night, you dot summon. dot dot. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Now, how, with the summoning, I do get a bonus because of the the item I acquired in the sea. Yeah, you so get an extra something. die. Yeah, okay. Because of the ancestral stuff. effigy. So I know. Do I actually? Do I know the mother's name? I'm sure I do know the mother's name, but I have forgotten it now. That we've, I we've not. Okay. 
I don't think we've talked about it. I don't think we know the name. I'll get one. Okay. Mm. Shall I make the roll? Uh, wait a minute. Well, again, so the thing is, if you want to conjure a specific spirit, you get plus one obstacle. Well, yeah, I want to. I want to summon this this yeah. exact person. Yeah. So it's going to be obstacle four then. Okay, that's that's no problem. That's no problem because you know what? I'm a master summoner. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. So I get one advantage from the from the thing. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to do that, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna on this occasion put two Arthur in mm-hmm. because if I'm going to fail, let's do it right. Let's do it by spending points in it. And so I want to make sure I get this right individual. And base obstacles four. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Well, yeah. look at you. And you're going to want to re-roll those sixes because you want all the successes you can get on this roll. Do I? Okay. It really does matter here. So Okay, so I get three sixes. Yep. So I don't need to spend three fate? No, one fate is all you need. Okay, I shall spend a fate then. Hey, uh, okay, so we'll 3d6. Three more. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Horrible, isn't it? Check out the master summoner here. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody's watching me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, right. If, if the summoner met, meets uh, the obstacle, an entity of the appropriate type appears. Um, announces one of his many names and the price of his help. Agrees to perform the service for the price described. Uh, no bargain is possible. But not only did you meet the obstacle, you went over it. So if the summer exceeds the obstacle, um, skillfully cast a summoning spell, earn some leverage. Uh, the creature announces itself with one of his personal names and agrees to perform the service for the price described for the order. However, you can bargain now. So... Um, so you can spend your extra successes of which you have three oh no more five five yeah above the actual obstacle yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. So you can bargain or haggle with the entity. And if you win a bargaining, you can lower the price or increase the duration duration of the service by one step per success you spend on this thing. Uh, no, sorry. Um, it's, it, well, success in the test because you roll for bargaining at that point. So um, what you can spend your five successes on is mm-hmm. if you want to spend one to bargain, like to get the opportunity to roll for bargaining, that's that's one spend. Uh, if you lose the bargaining, you can spend your extra successes to try and re-roll the bargaining, basically. Um, Brilliant. And then... Uh, okay, and then you can, if you want to, you can spend up to two to get extra dice for your bargaining roll. So those are the uses you can put your. Um, so yeah, extra... well, I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna try and bargain. Yeah, the thing here is, you're already at the lowest service price, mm-hmm. so I guess you would be bargaining for uh, like a free service then. Free at that service. Point. Yeah. I, I mean, I bargain it because that's what you've got to do. You've got to yeah. try and get the best you can. Yeah. So, yeah, you spend one. You have four left. Now you can roll for bargaining. You can spend up to two of your remaining four successes on getting extra dice. I will do that because let's just say this is... If, the more I succeed, the better it's going to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you spend two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've spent three, and now you can roll your bargaining skill two with two extra, extra dice. dice. Yeah. Right, Okay. Fox and advantages, Arthur. What's the obstacle for the bargaining? Um, it's going to be actually a versus test. So okay, 
Just roll Stop. against one, and then... Okay. Oh, I should have added the two extra, extra dice there. Apologies. Um, roll through... 2d6 extra, wasn't it? Yeah, Yeah, 2d6. Yeah. Plus. Okay. Okay, let me... Oh, this is, right, please don't imagine this is like a super wizard ghost. Well, I got one. So, yeah, uh, please mark all those those rolls that you just did. But... Oh, yeah, I got XP. Way. Yeah. Routine. So I got a routine for circulation. Yeah, I brought that down. Summoning was a routine. Yeah. So. Oh man. You you get free free revelation. Okay. Nice. So what do you ask of the ghost of Beric's mother, okay, so <laughs> whose is... name you now know? And this is important because you can leverage the, the name to yeah. get bonuses to summon her again. Um, let's see. Here we go. Um... How, um, what sort of scope for information am I allowed with this revelation? I have to draft oh, it like you, now. You ask. Like... You ask. I'll, I'll give you what we have. So I imagine so, she's. I imagine she died relatively young, like mid forties, ish. Um, when someone else, she's got. You know, she looks. You know, she looks roughly that correct age. We can have a shimmer to her. Um, we engage in a in a sort of a discussion. I sort of explain who I am. I see, I'm Cameron Redwind of the. I think can I give my title of the. Of the flip, what's my title? <laughs> of the Covenant of the First Flame? Covenant, no, it's of the Forex Fires. Um, okay, so I, I, we, I recently became, I basically explained what I recently became a Dark Watcher, and I'm trying to help the organization rebuild in a time of great need. Um, she also, I believe, from what I've heard about her and talking to Beric, she also was a member and believed in the cause. The information I I'm, I'm seeking from her is because I know the church is, is a monolith. It guards its secrets well. So I'm hoping that she can help me find information about the origins of the cult of the first flame. I'm trying to trace it back. If if she knew something, that's what possibly one of the reasons that the, she was a, she was taken from this world. Okay, so. Uh, yet yeah, you're standing in the alchemy workshop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've intoned your spell and there's a there's a shiver in the air uh, nothing materializes because that is the way of uh, disembodied spirits it costs them to do stuff uh, so you, you've summoned her you know she's present there's a there's a presence in the air and you you hear this like echoing from basically the corners of the room voice uh, of of the ghost of Beric's mother, Rosalind, uh, which is in the chat. Um, uh, she, uh, yeah, you you want you asked about the origin of the covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, she replies in a, like a series of whispers. Uh, Greetings, Cameron. I do not know about the origins. Do you wish for me to go find out? Which is something that, you know, is something like mm -hmm. basically, if they don't know, they'll go find out. You can send this ghost into the world to find this information on their own merits. I just look at my familiar <laughs> and then back. Yes. Yes, please. This information is important to to me to me and to your to your son. I will do this, Cameron Redwood. Fare you well. Watch out. And the, the presence dissipates and uh, she has gone to fulfill your task. So, Wheelmaster, this is the first time this I've done this mm -hmm. successfully, not shank the entire team. 
Thank you, yep. John. Um, <laughs> when she returns, will she just appear at any point in time? Just... Yeah, she's gonna. She's basically now. She is an actor in the world, going to on this quest. And when she is done, if she can actually complete it, she's gonna come back with what she has. You just be going to sleep one night, Cameron, and you see this person. That's what I think. What yeah. a bitch. <laughs> Like, spirits can get messed up in these quests, right? I'm not going to corrupt her spirit <laughs> or something horrible, right? Like, I'm not creating a wraith by sure, doing this. Surely there are no summoners capable of messing with ghosts in the Covenant. Look, look, I made a... I, I'm a master summoner, right? I've read all the books, mm-hmm. but, you know, there's always a chance that I forgot You're master to in theory. Ca- Ca- Cameron, it's not like you created one such summoner with a circles role like last session. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- basically, right now, it's like everything's on the table. Uh, this ghost is in the world. They're on a quest bound by your magic. They're going to do their utmost to make it work. Right. They they don't get freebies, so they're going to go and find out by whatever means they have about this thing that you ask about. And um, they're going to do their best. I really hope this doesn't backfire. But I can't, at the same time, I kind of do. <laughs> yeah well uh i i do think it's it's wonderful like story beats mm-hmm. like later down the line you're like oh by the way beric the the mother you're so sad about that the the covenant killed back in the day you know burned at the stake yeah i, I summoned her ghost and i sent it back to the covenant <laughs> There's something poetic about it <laughs> yeah but no it's it's fine so she's on a quest now and i'm sure it'll be it'll be wonderful silky smooth It'll be fine. And then I will, I will obviously I'll continue my reading. I'm so I'm, I'm what I'm trying to find is any inform, if I don't think requires a role, but just any information about Dolph Syria yeah. that may have make a ATM. make a role that that you're you're using to do this. Uh, so it has to be a skill then of some description. <laughs> yeah. So what, what are you doing skill to find history? Out? Then I guess would be the maybe that's the well. That that would be like basically if you have access to Lord Barrett's Manor. Uh, he has a lot of stuff from both his own pursuits and his mother's. And there's a bunch of material you could research there. I will research. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to pick a skill to do the research. Mm-hmm. The problem, isn't it? Um, uh, one, of, one of those potential skills might be the research skill. As well. Oh, a new skill. The research skill. Uh, well, I mean, if you have something already... I've got obscure history, but I don't know if I could do the research, like mm. start the research skill and then fork in obscure history. Yeah, that that would be the thing here. We do that now. We can stretch it for obscure history, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult by virtue of not being research. Okay. So well, I I I like learning new skills, so why not? It's yeah. Yeah, research skill. Research. Okay. Um, is this, is this perception? Yeah, or perception. Is, yeah. Okay. Perception so have, is like every mental. So I've got dull, <laughs> dull, dull Syriac wise as well that yeah. I'm learning. Yep. Yeah. Can I fuck in that? Can't help you here. No. Okay. Unfortunately, because no. you're learning a new one. Yeah. Right. So. Okay, but what the, what's the what's yeah, the obstacle? Yeah, I need to figure out the research. Stiff. I, I want to point out he's got like the history of um Dulceria, volumes one to seven. Yeah, I just uh, on the in, on the mint shelf condition. There. <laughs> yeah. Research is the art of navigating libraries, gathering data, and collating coherent reports. So common knowledge, interesting facts, collating relevant information. Deciphering uh, monographs, uh, ob- obscure subject. Collating relevant relevant information from a native language text. Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. So does the forking going in the help and help and advantage thing? Or is that separate? Yeah, uh, you're you're you can't fork into this. Okay, right. Yeah. This okay. is uh and the reason is it's not a skill that you're rolling, you're rolling your stat. Right, and you can okay. only fork skills into skills. Okay. 
Okay, so it's base obstacle three, which yep. will make it a six. Yep. Um, you can blast in some Arthur if you want. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. This is important. Um, mm -hmm. And if you fail, you're instead going to find out something potentially problematic. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the full three in. You know what? I'm gonna go big. Why not? You gotta spend it. And space obstacle three. Um, additional? No. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna roll. Nothing happened. Oh, yeah, gosh. I think we might be waiting for. <laughs> Roll 20 to catch up, catch up here. I'll try one again. Maybe I, maybe I didn't pick something right. Okay, let's do this again. So helping advantage is zero. Arthur, three. Obstacle, three. Oh, man. And no sixes. Oh, that's five whiff dice. I get a tick Rough. at least. Rough. Yeah, you do get a tick. And uh, you can put all that Arthur expenditure into your uh, perception. So you can put down your three persona in perception. Oh, in the... Um... In the little circle for a P next to perception. The actual stat. Uh, yeah, you look up the stat perception on the right edge. Three oh, yeah, different yeah. little things. P and put three in. Yep. yep. Right with you now. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Cool. So, um, you um, you do find some reports of Dulcereth. Nothing too in depth. However, you stumble upon uh, a couple of volumes, indeed, uh, of rather suspect lore uh, related to the um, the conjuration of certain spirits of the more nefarious kind. And that's with uh, Rosalind's other stuff. Oh. Oh, really? Mm hmm Was she a summoner? Oh, man. Beric also, men also mentioned that he has been talking to the spirits before. Oh, oh, okay. That yeah, there are there are a couple of tomes of rather dark um, lore about. It's like the bad stuff, though. Like it was was this in the the questionable part of the lab when I was? Yes, in, the, was this is the this would be the the one that you need to talk to Doctor Armitage about if you're in the <sighs> Arkham Library. I might have to take those with me. You know, just to like. Just so I can keep my tent like held down, you know. I'm not going to obviously use there, that knowledge. Yeah. I don't know. This is bad stuff. Okay, yeah. Put down a couple of tomes of um, suspicious summoning lore, and you, of course, like you don't have the time to like pour through them in detail because there are magical writings that is. Um, like leagues ooh, ooh. more this, dense. This than... might not be available to do in this session, but is there a way to figure out if she had a, a title of her own? A title? You know, like I've got the fo uh, the the f fox. Well, that that is that is something that people that know about that stuff call you. It's um mm -hmm. like like someone calling you a Jonah on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. Good, yeah. So that's pretty much me done for now. Yep. I will um I will reconvene with Glavi and have a few drinks with him. Mm -hmm. Um I don't want to get I don't want to get full on tanked. Right. Okay. Well, um as we are getting on a bit, we'll uh we'll move on to when you're departing Strathfell to mm -hmm. get the show on the road. So did you want to uh, buy anything for your trip? Like any wagons, horses, anything like that? Or just keeping in mind that that will necessitate resources rolls or something else. Stealing. I would like uh, to I mean, I'm assuming we need like the food and supplies we'll need and shit like that, right? 
I have resources zero, so it's not really an option for me. I mean, I can try to get us. If we need, we need more supplies, right? Or else we're gonna be foraging and all that other stuff. But all you, I've you got can... is the years of teaching and knowledge in my brain. I don't have any um, material any health. Yeah. You you can hunt on the way. So that is also an option. Sure, but I mean, yeah, probably shouldn't like go for months in like the desert lands without any supplies. It's like there's a whole movie about that that came out recently about people trying to survive in Alaska and then not making it. So mm -hmm. let's not do that. <laughs> um, I can make a resources role for us on, on that behalf if we want to try to <clears throat> have some extra stuff. Supplies yeah. So and available to you is like yeah, large bulk, still. <laughs> bulk quantities of frontier hard tack. And water, but hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, wow. there's going to be snow, so you're, you're kind of okay for water. Oh, okay, yeah. Nice. Give me some extra water skins and things. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Should I have to put it in gear and shit? To, to be honest, man, I was expecting Tyrael to bust out that Lemba spread. No, that's separate. I have to buy that. Yeah, that, that's 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 expensive. That's it. That's it. It ain't no, like, I just throw out the Lemba. Ah, you know. <laughs> um, it's artisanal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Super artisanal. Uh, but yeah, all right. You want me to roll for that, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some supplies so, and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say like if you want what is there, which is the dank is as basic hard stuff tack, there, um, in bulk for all y'all, and it's maybe gonna you know last both in quantity and also in actually staying edible. Um, it's let's call it two. All right. Well, that's all so, I got. So let's hope for the yeah. best. Um, the tax automatically deducts, right? I think it should. Let's try yeah, it. Let's double check for science. Button. Hit the button. Come on. Uh, yeah, I did, and I got uh, zero oh, obstacle. I go well. I'm sorry, I didn't put an obstacle yeah. in, but uh, I got a one. It was a two, yeah. but I had a six in you there. Have, you have a six. So, so let's can... try it. Uh, fate point, right for that? Yep. I did this before. We'll do this for now. Uh, let's just roll a it's a roll d6. Yeah. Okay, so it turns out I'm really resources there. Just... The, the army took all the heart attack. <laughs> they eat all that. No, we're so screwed now. They're they're fresh out. All right. There's there's no rations to be had in Shrafo. Oh well. And uh yeah, you 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 spent some of your walk around money and um now you <laughs> you're, you're so well, we'll see tax so for one. Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we're setting out on the road then. All right. So, um, I will uh, open up my notes here. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, you leave Strathfell going sort of southeast. This is the far north, and um, winter arrives just as the journey starts. And uh, first, it casts a blanket of frost and rime over everything in the wilds here, before gently covering it with snow as the days go by on your journey. And uh, this is something that Terrell especially would possibly appreciate. Um, because you're not really from these sorts of biomes. So there is a particular beauty to the land in the time of, of winter up here, uh, a rather peaceful stillness. Nothing really moves aside from some animals uh, foraging for food, but everything sort of stops and um, everything's covered with uh, snow. And this far from the hundred kingdoms of, kingdoms of humanity, uh, there are only occasional signs of habitation. There's the occasional lean-to that you can spot in the wooded areas, most likely, and uh, the occasional overgrown farm or ancient ruin of a manor uh, collapsing in on itself somewhere here. You don't meet a lot of other, other travelers, really. Now, um, I would like for y'all to give us a, a something to to travel your intent to get like you know the rough sort of idea of where you're heading uh, Glover knows where the this 
thing is you have the mountain range to guide you. So it's not that you're going to get lost necessarily, but uh, what, what is, what is, I, I guess like orienteering or the equivalent for your mm -hmm. travels, unless you guys have something else uh, in mind. I mean, well, I can, I can certainly to sort of see how your, your travel goes. I can certainly handle that if we need to. Well, um, if, if Tyrael is going to handle the orienteering, which is good because I'm no good at it, uh, I'm going to suggest that I perhaps make a foraging roll while he's doing that. Yeah, because we don't can, got shit. Yeah, see if I can <laughs> so, garner some meager supplies on the way. This, this, oh. this is an excellent opportunity for us to try out for the first time linked tests. So ah. we can actually, uh, Cameron, do you want to get roped into this? Uh, we're going to make a sequence of rolls. Why here. not? Okay, Why not? so uh, we know that Glarver is going to forage. Terrell is going to orient here, uh, or the, uh, he's going to elf orient here. Yeah, I'm um, Ca Cameron, uh, what are you contributing to the journey here? It's a journey. <laughs> are we going on a journey? Uh, <laughs> um, I've got my books oh, I here. Should have, I should have. You know, mm. you know when you think, guys, before you agree to say yes, you should look at what skills you've got available. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I am going to use astrology to help us navigate via the stars if that is possible wonderful <laughs> and when you're using astrology it's not that you're looking at the stars the you're daytime. making you're yeah. making charts, charts about yeah, this <laughs> cool all right um what's the order here Who, who's gonna roll first so what happens in link test is the effects of the previous test affect the modifiers of the second test please let me mm. go first <laughs> Okay. Go well, for it. Cameron's gonna give us the uh, astrological readout for the journey. Basically, reading a fortune of this journey. Yeah, well, uh, the moon is in the seventh sign of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. We should head east. Oh, age of Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the obstacle? Please don't say six. <laughs> Please don't say five. Yeah, you you pick the one that I'm kind of like. What even is this? Maybe the weather's okay. bad. I can't see so, the stars. No, what's... We're, we're trying to get. We're trying to like find a way and like forage or whatever. And Cameron's like, my first is in moon, but not in star. What am I? <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, oh, I it's it's three, Matthew. It's right here. Oh, determining boy. the auspices of beginning an enterprise it's right on guys i, I can oh, fuck it up because <laughs> i'm going next apologize I, mean... I can only apologize for what's about to happen mm -hmm. <laughs> cool okay terrell uh you're up next um what's your oh, elf thing called again uh, it's it's the um song of path and ways okay oh yeah this is the one that i i couldn't find Last oh time. yeah, I couldn't find it either. I had to, I had to type in orienteering into fine control fine, and then, then yeah, it'll pop so, up. So, song of, but it's the elven version of orienteering. Or is so. it? Is it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what I oh you're using the book. Uh, yep. Yeah, so, uh, orienteering is here. So, uh, we're going in unfamiliar land. So obstacle three. Oh. Uh, and do does does yeah. he get? Do I get help from his role? Uh, well, yeah, you you get plus one obstacle from that. So obstacle four. Oh, thank you, thank you for that, Matthew. Appreciate it. Um, we're doing so well. Um, <laughs> it's I'm not spending effort. it. I'm not spending any of my my dice on this <laughs> right now. Uh, it's four obstacle. Let's just let it fly. <laughs> yes finally something went my way look, look at this guy rolling Jeez. four dice and getting five successes look i got look. three sixes that's why look, 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 all right there we go cool beans Fall out of i i didn't doubt you for a second <laughs> thank you I also knew please you were gonna do it please He's remember to I mark down your lie. things because you're getting some great I know. Are you sure we should be going this way, though, Terrell? Because I've been looking at the stars. No, 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 no. Trust my other Look, I understand. You see that little, like, no, 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 no,
just go back to sleep there. <laughs> okay, Garvir, you get. Uh, oh, you're foraging. Let's look at your obstacle here. Mm. Du, 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 foraging. Um, feeding yourself in the wild. Obstacle two. Oh, sweet. You know, ask the stone where the, where the nicest berries are. Like. Okay, so <laughs> feeding... Stone cares not for berries. Mm. <laughs> true. Right, so... It's, it's only about... foraging for yourself. Right. So... Uh, and it says in the wild too. Okay, let's go with three because you're foraging for more than more than one person. You get one extra die from um, Terrell's exceeding the obstacle here. Okay, so we get a plus one die. Putting a persona into it, so we plus two dice total. Yep. So I get one dice for help, one dice for Arthur, and you said it was obstacle f three, three, three. three. Oh, I've got any sixes. Right. No. Okay, so you find your way. Uh, this is a long, long trek. And uh, we're going to leave it when we come upon a forest. Now, uh, Terrell, uh, you can immediately tell these are the kinds of trees that uh, some of the elven princedoms quite enjoy. Uh, they are golden ash trees, uh, the, the leaves being, you know, sort of yellow gold mm. in their prime. And um, it's in the throes of winter and it is quite forlorn. In addition, you the, the trees are shriveled and, and gnarled. Uh, it's, it's not only like these are old trees, it's also like these trees have They've had a bad time. Uh, a they sick forest. They are they are doing poorly. Yeah. Or they have been somehow mistreated. Um, mm. Obviously, they don't have leaves because it's winter. But um, yeah, you you come into this forest. You you walk in the sort of solemn, kind of sad uh, forest of these trees that elves cherish. Cherish. Uh, obviously, this was sometime uh, probably planted. It usually tends to be that way with these trees. Uh, it's been a long time, though. And um, you, in this forest, you find ancient menhirs, and you come upon, following the sort of a trail of these menhirs, you come upon a sort of ruined structure. I say ruined, but it's not like there's rubble all around. It's mostly just, it's been very, very long time since anyone's maintained any of this. Uh, there is a sort of raised bit of courtyard of finely carved stone. Now, of course, it's been weathered uh, of centuries. Um, and there is, in this sort of raised uh, area, there is a rather large reflecting pool that you know from your homelands. Elves have these. Um, they like the 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 lords of the ages use these with their sort of far sight. They stare into the waters of creation, and they glimpse things that have come to pass, things that are, and some things that might yet come to pass. Now, this reflecting pool is not frozen over. It is filled with fetid water and detritus of nature and animals. And um, as you're sort of sitting down, maybe like, oh, let's camp here for the, for the day, like might as well. Um, you do note that there is, there's some tracks here about people and we're going to cut when uh, our heroes here discover that there is indeed a camp some distance away from this sort of reflecting pool uh, glade, I suppose, a grove open area in the, in the forest. And um, it seems to be like there's a, like, it's, it's a, it's an excavation is the only way to uh, sort of 
describe it. There's several tents for you know people to ostensibly live in. There's also these constructed tarp coverings of open ground, which is clearly being digged through. Uh, there's piles of dirt half covered in snow. Uh, there are, you think maybe a couple dozen, hard to say, uh, people, both humans and dwarves, uh, at work here. And we're, we're going to leave it when uh, you, you see this vista of, of people sort of because it's it's late in the day because your plan was to maybe camp at the reflecting pool they're sort of like winding down they're losing light so there's there's people sort of shoveling their last bits of dirt uh someone's over there like getting the cook on and um yeah we're, we're closing it there with the sort of setting sun in the distance painting everything in orange and red uh, as the snow slowly uh falls from the sky on our heroes scene here Thank you very much. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much for running it. Very much enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah very good. good. Again, it's a bit of a <laughs> bookkeeping thing at the start. Uh, so next time, we're uh, probably Actually, going yeah. to have a, a bit of a running start to things. Okay. Well, I shall end the stream here.